experience AD. I was a single mum, honest mum. I was single for 19 years. I was about 37 when my husband left. He stayed around in Henley for about three months and then he moved to Jakarta in Indonesia. So I was left alone with a two-year-old. She saw her father probably once a year, maybe twice a year. For the rest of the time, it was just her and I. Sheer panic is probably the biggest thing that goes through your head. Will you be able to cope? Life as a single parent was always pretty tough. Working hard, working full time, trying to juggle everything, trying to get enough money to pay the mortgage, pay the bills. So I sort of did a succession of jobs. I worked full time in an office and I also worked weekends for a catering company doing waitressing. I think Sunday was the only day that Honor and I actually used to spend the whole day together. I very much relied on my parents to help out, but we, we got by, we did stuff. We were fine. We were very, very close because we spent all our time together. So happy for mum that she's found happiness and that she gets to do it every day. So I get to watch Pete give her that every single day. Harder struggles were always going to events. So parents evening, you were always going on your loan. So that was quite tough. In all honesty, I don't think I ever felt isolated or lonely that often because I knew I could always pick up the phone. My parents were a great support. I also had some really good girlfriends who were local, who we used to get together and have a fish and chipper with the kids. But it obviously kept me going because I wanted to get the best for her and do the best I could. <laughs> You've not know, seen that one before. <laughs> My parents kept me going. So, yeah. Oh, it was tough. I don't know, you just knew that you had to keep going. So yeah, my parents were always a great support for me. They would really help me. They didn't live too far away. So if there was ever an opportunity where I needed a babysitter, they would always happily do it. My name's Rebecca. I became a single parent when I was pregnant. It was a really hard time of my life. When I came out of the relationship with my husband, because I got married quite young, it was at a period that all my friends were sort of just settling down. Some of the things that I found difficult were just having one income in the house and finding it really difficult to be able to do things. So I couldn't go out and meet friends in the evenings after work anymore. Five years ago, one of the leaders at my church spoke to me about setting up a group for single parents. And I then began to work with a couple of other single parents in the church. My experiences of being a single parent had been quite challenging. So I felt it was really important that there was something to support people, not just in the church and not just for Christians, but for all single parents. And we're meeting every week. We've moved our meetings to a Friday morning, United Parents or Up for Short. One of its main aims is to create a sense of community and a space that people can come and talk with other people who get what they're going through. No, they can't. They can't. They can't. They can't. A lady whose daughter, one of has two daughters and one of them was overseas. She's just come back now and she hadn't seen her daughter in over a year. And we've lived through that with her and that amazing moment when her daughter came back and her daughter came to the group. So I definitely can see relationships building and that, that sense of community is there. I think a lot of the help which is out there for single parents is unofficial and informal. I personally don't think there's enough. Change it to yellow. Oh, uh, probably won't be yellow by the time. Single parent families aren't just people who've got divorced. They are people who've been widowed, who've lost their spouse or partner. Some 
physically violent, some emotionally abusive, and some which they're still dealing with the consequences of now, years later. The person who made the greatest mistake is the one who did nothing because they could only do a little. So I feel like the group is only doing a little and I'd love for it to do much more. Nobody with kids walks away from that unless they feel that they've exhausted every possibility and that they have no other option. Biggest piece of advice I would give to somebody in the same position that I was in 19 years ago, newly single with a child is, keep going and try and get the best for you. You've always got your child. As long as you've got a, a good family and a support network, then you'll be fine. It's better to be happy and single than unhappy in, in a relationship. If like grandparents or family, like aunties, uncles offer to have the baby or child for the weekend, but just let them. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Be brave to think of it as a positive and not a negative because you have your own input in your child's life. There are times when it will be exhausting and that you've had enough, but I used to with Annie and Sam. I'd be shattered and I'd have had the worst day at work and then trying to remember something to cook for tea, polish shoes, get ready for school. And then I would go into their bedrooms at night when they were asleep and give them a kiss and it made everything perfect. To always put the children first. I think in all of the, when we talk about single parents, basically it's where two relations two people have broken up a relationship. So it's the fault of one or the other or both of the people. It's never ever the fault of the children. Picture is pretty good actually. This reminds me of, although it was just the two of us, we actually did get on really, really well. We still got on really well. And although things were tough, things were never that bad. We always managed to have a laugh. We made the best of it. This photo was taken the day after I came out of hospital after having Sam, my second child, and I remember taking the photo and all of a sudden having a rush of responsibility and being petrified because I knew that we wouldn't be able to stay in the house we were living in because I couldn't afford to stay there and it made me realise that I had a huge responsibility, that I had to bring up these two children and not in the way that I'd ever dreamed of. It was the first time I really realised I was on my own with Annie and Sam. I look back on this picture and it reminds me of quite strong feelings because that was the point where I think Hugo was a couple of months old. That's when all the excitement kind of settled down because when you first come out of hospital everyone wants to come see you, everyone wants to meet the baby, you get loads of presents and then once all that calmed down like reality kind of hit in and it was just me and this baby which I loved obviously. After quite a particularly traumatic birth as well a lot of those feelings came back for me to think about and I didn't really have a partner to talk about it to. It was kind of quite a big shock. I remember just being really worried about the future. I learnt that I'm a lot stronger than I thought I was. I learnt that you have to just continue and battle through. I learnt that you do become a different person. You stop being number one in your life and your children are number one. And that is the most important thing. The biggest thing that I learned, and it probably took me a long time to learn this, is that I'm actually quite strong. It took me many, many years of going through the process of thinking that I was actually quite weak. He didn't think, he didn't mention it. <laughs> to come out the other side of it, to actually realise and have my daughters tell me at a later point in life that actually I am quite a strong woman. I, I love you very, very much. I couldn't be proud of 
proud of you. Every day you make me proud. And I love the young woman that you 